The Irish novelist Colm Toybean once wrote, a novel is a set of strategies, closer to something in mathematics or quantum physics than something in ethics or sociology. It is a release of certain energies and a dramatization of how those energies might be controlled and given shape. Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth is an awesome illustration of this idea. As a narrative, it is an unstoppable dynamo of conflict and dread, an elegant, emotionally merciless equation in which each finely wrought scene brings Lily Bart, Wharton's sympathetic and hopelessly flawed protagonist, one jagged step closer to the tragic fall we see from the beginning is absolutely inevitable. This novel's narrative drive is the result of Wharton's exceptional skill in the craft of fiction. Each scene is full of conflict, each has a clear turning point, and each creates a marked change of fortune, bringing Lily either closer to or more distant from her desires. Wealth by marriage, the adulation of her peers, permanent membership in the highest echelons of her age and social station. Wharton's turn of the century New York society is convincingly drawn. The narrative arc is downward and sharply defined. The chapters are short, like potato chips, so that you can't just read one, you must finish them all. And once immersed, the reader is hard pressed to turn away. Take this passage. For a clever man, it was certainly a stupid beginning. And the idea that his awkwardness was due to the fear of her attaching a personal significance to his visit chilled her pleasure in seeing him. Even under the most adverse conditions, that pleasure always made itself felt. She might hate him, but she had never been able to wish him out of the room. She was very near hating him now, yet the sound of his voice, the way the light fell on his thin, dark hair, the way he sat and moved and wore his clothes, she was conscious that even these trivial things were inwoven with her deepest life. In his presence, a sudden stillness came upon her, and the turmoil of her spirit ceased. But an impulse of resistance to this stealing influence now prompted her to say, It's very good of you to present yourself in that capacity, but what makes you think I have anything particular to talk about? So, Lily loves Selden, and yet she hates him. She is attracted to him, and yet, because she is determined to marry for money, she will not permit herself to act upon that attraction. For these and other reasons, throughout the book, Lily Bart exists in an agonized state of indecision. Her indecision makes us uneasy, and we must read on from sentence to sentence and page to page as we wait for the other shoe to drop. So the sentence to sentence fabric of this, the story is exceptionally compelling, as is the underlying narrative structure of the novel. This is powerful writing, and The House of Mirth is proof that current-day novelists still have a lot to learn from Edith Wharton.